Hi, I'm James Richards, helping you to be all you can be by all that God is. Away. What's the biggest threat to Christianity? Is it militant Islam? Is it rampant atheists? Is it scientific discoveries? You know, postmodernism, pop culture. Is it any of that or is it something else? I've had conversations with friends and, you know, there's one thing that's definitely agreed. People say that the church is under attack. Now, the church has been under attack from day one, but it's not going anywhere because Jesus said, on the understanding of who he is, he's going to build his people. And death is not going to beat it or overtake it. So, it ain't going nowhere. It's here to stay. Until he takes it, and I'm not talking about rapture, I'm just talking about the. It's invincible. Ironically, though, I think the biggest threat to Christianity is not from the outside, but directly on the inside, and it's Christians. You see, if I want to take out an organization or a company, the best way to do it is from the inside out, not from the outside in. You see, something we miss, you know. A lot of Jesus' teachings and warnings. Was it about unbelievers? Because for unbelievers, he just told us to tell them the gospel. He just told us to disciple them, love them. A lot of his warnings was actually about a believer, but a particular type of believer. False believers. False believers are more of a problem than unbelievers. Why? Because they are on the inside. They are the ones who can cause real havoc, especially when they have the label bishop, pastor, leader, apostle, evangelist, you name it. That's why I don't care about labels. I don't really, I don't care from Christian to bishop, so and so, deacon. I don't care. They are the best disguise. <laughs> if you're going to attack and bring down parts of the church, or at least try. See, if I was a devil and I had a choice between that and sending in some Muslim or a Hebrew Israelite or some scientist to try and tell you, come on, it's a no brainer what I'm going to do. No brainer. Maybe that puts a different spin on parables, uh, where Jesus talks about the kingdom. There's one where he talks about a farmer planting and seeds are planted. And then as they grow, some more start to grow, which the father didn't plant, someone else planted. And the reapers, who were the angels, symbolically say, um, who are these guys? You didn't plant them. Should we go and rip them out? farmer God said no leave it let them grow together in case by ripping out one you harm the other and I thought that's deep because that means those who are genuine seed those who aren't seed of his will grow together now it's easy to put that as church in the world but remember guys when Jesus spoke there weren't no church we forget that so easy. In the eyes of the Father, the world consists of two people, believers and unbelievers. In whatever context and in whatever congregation, in whatever business, in whatever organization, whatever it's called, be it church or not, there will be believers, there will be unbelievers. Problem is, the either deceived or they're just being malicious. Sadly, it doesn't matter which. You're not a true believer, you're just not a true believer. In fact, I might even argue that the ones who think they are and are deceived are more dangerous because they really believe they're doing what they need to do and it's for God and it's the truth. 
pastors, leaders, guys, whoever are leading, you know, ministry, we have to be so aware of this and up on it and help people to know they are in the right place. Don't be so quick to celebrate just because we've got more numbers. That's a dangerous game. You know, Matthew 7, 22 is the famous, they will come to me and say, uh, we, we, we preach de we, we cast out demons in your name, we preached in your name, we did this and that in your name, and he's gonna turn around and say, I never knew you. I'm not to speak because he's not saying, I knew you, and then I turned my back. He's saying, I never knew you. But maybe the church did. Anyway, if you're a child of God and you know the one and only true one, logically speaking, we shouldn't have anyone who can overcome us. All right, so they can kill us. Well, everyone dies, so that's a misnomer. What we're doing while we're alive is the point. And to be fair, many of us, you know, when I say us, I'm talking about believers or believers in name. Many Christians don't pray, don't fast, don't read. Don't take this work serious. Don't study. Forget reading. Study, study. You need to study. I say it again. Study. Reading ain't enough. Especially in this day and age where the young people, any people, don't have to take the preacher's word for it. They can go on Google. They can go anywhere else. Um, and they can check out stuff for themselves. So in this day and age, you need to know your stuff, man. You need to get in your books. Stop the following memes. Know for yourself. I think what some of us do, we get sidetracked and we, we do this other game and I give you about another example where we think we have to know everything about everything in order to be safe. There's this story about a guy who worked in the bank and he was the one responsible for making sure counterfeit money does not get into the system. So he used to go around looking at all the notes of counterfeit notes. So we'd recognize them when they come in. And then one day, a guy comes in, I don't know if it was his manager or whatever, and says to him, what are you doing? And he said, I'm looking through the notes. Why? Because I want to make sure if a counterfeit comes in, I notice it. And let's just say it's his manager. The manager said to him, why don't you just examine the true note, know it inside out, know it thoroughly, so then when a counterfeit comes, you'll know it's fake or at least have a very good idea. And it was like a light bulb went off in this guy's mind who was looking at all the counterfeit notes. It was so much easier and so much better. The point if you have the true thing and you know the true thing, you'll see the fake a mile off. Here's the other thing. I am not responsible for defending what I don't know. So I'm gonna make life easy for myself and get deep into the stuff I do know. Ask me a question on that and yeah, we can talk. Ask me a question about anything else and find someone else. I'm not supposed to know everything nor are you and this culture promotes that it's the google culture you know it's the, it's the social media it's the internet culture where we know news about things in africa and brazil and portugal and i'm just naming countries parts of the of our own country we don't even need to know really but it's like deep down to make you feel as though if you don't know something wrong with you like you have to be in the know it's on your phone, it's on your telly, it's on your computer, it's on your tablet. Bombarded with information. And the truth is you don't need to know all that stuff. Because 95% of it is not helping. If anything, it's polluting. You'd be better off spending your time knowing what you're about, why you confess it, and knowing what you live for spending your time and your energy on what you live for and, and being able to defend it. You have to see the biggest danger comes from the inside, not the outside. We gotta do something about it. You gotta do something about it. 
I'm going to play my part and continually check myself. This is James, helping you to be all you can be. See nature, I don't know what's around you, you know. But yes, I'm helping you to be all you can be. So we'll catch up next time. On the way. Take care. Peace. Be all you can be, but all that God is. Subscribe right here at The Way.